Hi, I'm Michelle. Welcome to my restaurant. It's quiet here now at Startup, but soon we'll be serving breakfast. With all the customers we'll have today, it's absolutely critical that we serve safe, high-quality food. Our goal of 100% customer satisfaction depends on it. That's why we're going to take a close look at the Food Safety Daily Checklist. It's in the McDonald's Food Safety Booklet. Completing the checklist every day is essential to ensure that food safety standards and procedures are met. We also must ensure compliance with health department requirements and McDonald's high quality standards. We keep completed checklists on file for at least 60 days to demonstrate that our food safety standards have been met, checked, and signed off by the manager. Each section of the video is color-coded and includes the running time of that section. This makes it easier to find each section and plan the time it will take you to view if you need to reference a section at a later time. We're going to highlight the main points of each part of the checklist. But you'll want to have a copy of your own food safety booklet so you can stop the video whenever you need to read a section in greater detail. As you complete the checklist, if you find any item that is not correct or does not meet the standard, take immediate corrective action. For issues related to temperature-based items, the food safety booklet contains troubleshooting information to help you take corrective actions. Ready to get started? Food safety checks at startup need to be completed as early in the day as possible. You're going to be making these checks. Check that the parameter is calibrated. Check that refrigerated products are in code. Make sure secondary shelf lives are clearly marked and open products are covered and wrapped. Take temperatures of refrigerated products in all refrigerated units and air in the freezer units. You'll also need to check supplies at the sinks, the sanitized towel buckets, glove supply, and some key salad prep procedures. To start, make sure the pyrometer is in calibration so that all temperature readings are accurate. To do this, take a hot cup Fill it with ice and add cold water from the beverage tower to fill the cup. Immerse the probe and swirl it around until the temperature stops changing. It should read 32 degrees plus or minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit. If the reading is not correct, the pyrometer needs to be recalibrated. Follow the manufacturer's instructions to recalibrate. Or you may need to send the pyrometer in for repair or purchase a new one. Next, check to make sure all refrigerated products are within their code dates. You may want to start in the walk-in refrigerator and spot check produce items and dairy products for code dates and proper rotation. If there are cases of refrigerated products anywhere else, you should also check their use through dates. While you're in the walk-in, also look to make sure any secondary shelf life dates or times have been clearly marked. Some examples would be products that are being thawed or open bags of product like lettuce or onions. Looking for these code dates is critical for refrigerated products. Even when held at the right temperature, sensitive products like lettuce can spoil if given enough time. All open products or containers must also be covered or wrapped. Check to make sure all salad ingredients are in the appropriate Cambro containers with lids. Any other open packages must be covered appropriately. Keeping food covered is important to prevent contamination of the food. Spot check all refrigerators or freezers to make sure open products are covered and within code. Next, you'll perform a series of temperature checks. Since we're in the walk-in, start with a random check of a refrigerated product's actual temperature. All products must be maintained at an internal temperature between 34 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Hold the tip of the pyrometer tightly between two packages that have been refrigerated overnight or longer, or fold a single package around the tip until the readout on the pyrometer stabilizes. Record the type of product checked and its measured internal temperature on the checklist. The walk-in is just one of the refrigerated units in the restaurant. You'll need to check the internal temperature of one product from every other refrigerated unit too. Here we'll test a creamer. Stick the probe directly into the creamer and read the temperature. Again, it should read between 34 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Discard the creamer when you are done. If any refrigerated products do not meet the standard, check all of the areas listed in the troubleshooting section and take the appropriate corrective action. Next, measure the temperature in the shake and sundae machine. Sanitize the probe first with a sanitized towel or by swirling the probe in some sanitizer solution. Then immerse the probe in the mixed reservoir and swirl it until the temperature stabilizes. 
it should read between 34 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If your shake machine has a digital readout, cross-check the readings from your pyrometer for accuracy. Once we're done with all of the refrigerated units, it's time to check the freezer temperatures. Here, we'll measure the temperature of the air, not the products. Read the temperature if there is a thermometer mounted inside the freezer. The temperature should read zero degrees Fahrenheit or below. If no thermometer is mounted inside the freezer, you can check the air temperature inside with the pyrometer. However, be careful not to leave the pyrometer in the freezer longer than five minutes as it can damage the unit. As with refrigerators, be sure all products are within code dates and proper first in, first out procedures are being followed. Next, we need to measure the air temperature in any other freezer units in the restaurant, like the grill side freezers. Record the temperature of each freezer on the checklist. If the air temperature of any freezer is not within standards, check all of the areas listed in the troubleshooting section to find the cause of the problem, then take corrective action. Make sure you document all the temperatures and checks you do as you go down the checklist. After you've performed all the temperature checks at startup, check for required supplies at all hand washing sinks. Check that the soap dispenser and warm running water are available and functioning at each hand washing sink, and that all hand dryers are functioning or paper towels are available. Check the back sink to make sure it's functioning properly and holds water and that all K-Star dispensers are filled with the correct chemicals and dispense McD, AP, SC, and k -Quat solutions. Make sure that cleaning supplies like brushes and no scratch pads are available. Buckets of clean sanitized towels and sanitizer solution at the proper concentration must be in the grill and front counter area. Sanitizer solution in the buckets should be clean and free of food debris or particles. Without clean sanitizer solution, the towels will not be able to clean and sanitize the surfaces. During the day, you'll change the sanitizer solution when it becomes dirty and also when a new load of washed towels is added to the bucket. You'll also need to check to make sure that the solution has been prepared properly. If you're using McD sanitizer, start with 2.5 gallons of lukewarm water in each towel bucket. Add one packet of McD sanitizer and mix by hand until dissolved. When prepared properly, a McD sanitizer solution will have a concentration of 100 parts per million. To check the sanitizer concentration, use a chlorine test strip available through your distribution center. Simply dip the strip in the solution, blot the strip with a paper towel, and then match the color to the vial. If the concentration is below 50 parts per million, the solution needs to be discarded and replaced with new solution. If you're using k -Quat sanitizer, make sure the buckets are filled properly for every batch of towels and grill cloths. When used correctly at the proper concentration, k -Quat sanitizer will appear pink in color in towel buckets and sinks. The minimum required concentration is 200 parts per million when the towel bucket is prepared. To check the concentration, use k -Quat test strips, which are also available through the distribution center or K-Chemical. Leave the strip in the solution for 10 seconds. Remove the strip, but don't shake it or blot it. Hold the strip next to the color chart and choose the color that most closely matches the color of the test strip. For in-use towel buckets with k -Quat solution, if you cannot get a reading on the test strip, discard the k -Quat solution and replace it with fresh solution. Check the salad prep area to make sure disposable gloves are available, and make sure your crew always uses them for salad preparation or other prep activities such as pre-sorting premium leaf lettuce and lemon wedging. Check to see that gloves are available at all other areas where gloves are required by local regulations, including colored disposable heat-resistant gloves at the grill area. During salad preparation, observe procedures to make sure that only one batch of salads is being prepared at one time. After completion, these salads must then immediately be placed in the refrigerator. Remaining salad ingredients can only be held at room temperature during assembly for a maximum of 30 minutes. Make sure that the person preparing salads rinses the grape tomatoes thoroughly in cold water before using them on salads. This completes your food safety checks at startup. The person completing this portion of the checklist should sign it. 
If anything was discovered that needs to be corrected or is not to standards, take appropriate corrective action and report it to the manager. Next, we'll move to the breakfast portion of the food safety checklist. All breakfast checks need to be completed within the first half hour of breakfast operations. Some of these checks involve monitoring crew to make sure that all correct food preparation, cleaning, and sanitizing procedures are being followed. You'll also be making several temperature checks of cooked food products. Checklist items include making sure that check time control for refrigerated products held at room temperature in the grill area. Checks of prepared food products will include cooked eggs and breakfast meats. Employees are healthy and are following hand washing procedures. Gloves are being worn when required. And towels and utensils are properly used. And proper cleaning and sanitizing of UHC trays, grill utensils, prep table utensils, and their holders. Check to make sure that both yellow and white Hutzler spatulas are available at the grill area. The yellow Hutzler should only be used to break the yolks on round eggs during cooking. The white Hutzler spatula or meat spatulas are used to handle cooked eggs. Observe that the yellow Hutzler is stored so that it does not come into contact with utensils used for cooked products. The yellow Hutzler needs to be kept in the dedicated slot in the breakfast tool organizer or on a dedicated stainless surface. Using a separate yellow Hutzler spatula for touching raw eggs prevents cross-contamination between cooked and raw products. Check to make sure the secondary shelf lives are indicated on the shelled eggs, pasteurized eggs, and breakfast meats in the grill area, or that the secondary shelf life tool is being used. Here's the procedure to check cooked round eggs for gelled yolks. Cook a full run of round eggs. Once the cooking cycle ends, Remove them to a clean UHC tray in the same sequence they were laid. Randomly select two of the eggs. Using a white Hutzler spatula, split the two eggs in half. Examine each yolk. The yolk should be gelled, not runny. Discard the two eggs that were tested. If the eggs are runny or show any signs of undercooking, immediately discard the entire run of eggs. Sanitize the UHC tray as well as the white Hutzler spatula. Troubleshoot and take corrective action until the proper visual characteristics are achieved. Cooking eggs until they are firm and not runny will ensure serving a safe product. Check cooked food in the holding cabinets to make sure all food is at or above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. First, sanitize the probe of the pyrometer. Make sure the product being probed has been held in the holding cabinet for at least 10 minutes. Insert the sanitized probe and take a reading. Check the temperature of one meat or egg product from every shelf of the UHC. Record the product with the lowest measured temperature on the checklist. Check all hot holding units. If any product is below the standard, check all the areas listed in the troubleshooting section and take the appropriate corrective action. Begin by making sure that all employees working in the restaurant appear healthy. Employees cannot work if they are suffering from diarrhea, fever, vomiting, jaundice, or fever accompanied by sore throat. The only exception would be if these symptoms are caused by a medical condition that a medical provider has confirmed will not cause foodborne illness, for example, a pregnancy. For assistance on dealing with employees who report illness, call McDonald's HR Consulting toll-free at 877-623-1955. Any employee with exposed, visible, open cuts or sores on their body needs to keep them covered with a bandage. If the cuts or sores are on the hands and the employee touches or prepares foods, they must also wear a disposable glove over the bandage. Spot check employees starting work in food preparation areas to make sure that they are washing their hands properly. Make sure that all crew are following the timed hand washing system. Proper and frequent hand washing by all employees is one of the most proactive steps we can take to ensure food safety. The process begins with a timer sound signaling the start. The manager deactivates the timer and resets it for the next hour and then washes his or her hands. Each employee takes a turn washing his or her hands. He or she then notifies the next person according to the hand-washing cycle chart. 
If anyone is too busy to leave their station when it's their turn to wash, the manager should temporarily fill in at their station so they can go wash their hands. The shift manager ends the cycle by washing his or her hands if they did not do so already. This process helps make hand washing an important part of the daily operations and involves everyone. Make sure that the hand washing timer is reactivated each hour. Check that procedures for prevention of cross-contamination when handling all raw food products are in place. If blue gloves are used in your restaurant, check to make sure that crew working at the grill are putting on blue gloves when removing beef patties, breakfast steak, grilled chicken, or other raw meat or poultry products from the grill side freezer and placing them on the grill. Blue gloves should also be worn to crack shell eggs into the egg cooking rings and dispense of eggshells. Make sure that the crew remove the colored gloves before touching trays, utensils, or cooked or ready-to-eat food products. If allowed by your health department, another approved procedure is to use McD sanitizer at the grill station. Employees apply McD hand sanitizer to their hands after handling raw products and before touching trays, tray liners, or utensils or cooked or ready-to-eat foods. Disposable gloves must be worn for food preparation at the salad station and check to see that gloves are available at all areas where required by local regulations. At food prep areas, check that towels are being changed out when lightly soiled and whenever employees wash their hands and then return to the prep table. The maximum time that a towel can be used is one hour. Make sure all UHC trays, egg rings, Hutzler spatulas, grill utensils, prep table utensils, and breakfast tool organizers are cleaned and sanitized at least every four hours using the three compartment sink method or approved dishwasher. This will control potential bacterial growth on trays and utensils. The last check for this section of the checklist is to verify that cooked steak patties meet the food safety standard. You'll need to follow these steps to complete the check on each product from all sections of grill that are being used to cook breakfast steak patties. In this test, one person cooks the patties and the manager verifies and records the temperatures to ensure times are set properly. Cook a full run of four patties. And after the cooking cycle ends, Remove them from the grill, one at a time, onto a clean, lined UHC tray. Season and place onions on them. Sanitize the probe. Insert the probe into the first patty, about halfway through. Let the temperature stabilize for a few seconds and then record it. Then do the same for the other three patties. All four internal temperatures must be at or above 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If any patty has an internal temperature below 160 degrees, discard the run. Wash and sanitize the UHC tray and sanitize the probe. Troubleshoot to make sure the proper procedures are being followed and that the grill is at the correct temperature settings. If everything is in order, increase the cooking time and repeat the check on another run of patties to determine that all of the internal temperatures meet the food safety standard. Document corrective actions on the checklist. Then repeat this process until you've checked all sections of the grill where breakfast steaks will be cooked. We'll see how to adjust cooking time in the next segment. This completes the breakfast section of the checklist. The person completing this portion of the checklist should sign it. If anything was discovered that needs to be corrected or is not to standards, take appropriate corrective action and report it to the manager. The last part of the daily checklist is the regular menu section. We covered many of these items in the breakfast section, so we won't repeat those. Instead, we'll look at the specific food safety checks that apply to the cooked beef and chicken products on the regular menu. The internal temperature checks on cooked beef patties should be completed after transition and before the lunch rush. All other regular menu checks should be completed within the first half hour of regular menu operations after transition. First, a quick reminder about the timed hand wash system. Of course, it continues throughout the day. Note the items that are similar to those for breakfast checks. They still need to be completed again for the regular menu. 
check to make sure whenever containers are refilled at the prep table that clean, sanitized containers are used. This is to ensure that the new product is not put on top of old. Otherwise, time control will not be possible and there is a risk that product on the bottom of the container will remain at room temperature for extended periods. As during breakfast, you must do a hot holding check of the temperatures of all food held in UHCs. During regular menu hours, you may also need to check temperatures in other hot holding units such as soup cookers or marinators. All cooked food should be 140 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Now let's take an in-depth look at how to take internal temperature checks for beef products. You'll need to follow these steps to complete the check on each product from all sections of grill that are being used to cook each type of product. You'll check regular menu beef patties to satisfy two key requirements. The first is the food safety standard. All internal temperatures must be at or above 155 degrees after cooking. In addition, at least one of the four internal temperatures you measure meets the quality standard of an internal temperature between 155 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Corrective action must be taken if either of these standards are not met and documented on the checklist. After transition and sometime before the lunch rush, a trained and verified person must establish daily cook times assisted by a crew person. Here the test run is 10 to 1 patties. On the first platen, cook a full run of 8 patties following normal patty placement guidelines. Sanitize the parameter probe. As soon as the clamshell opens, immediately season each patty individually. Remove them from the grill in two stacks of four onto a clean UHC tray with liner as quickly as possible. Remember that 10 to 1 patties must be seasoned and removed in 22 seconds. Once all of the patties have been removed, immediately probe the first patty that was removed. You are only required to obtain one reading from each patty probed. Note that you need to probe at an angle midway through the depth of the patty at the center. It's critical to allow the temperature for each reading to stabilize. This can take a few seconds. 163. Using a white Hutzler spatula, tongs, or with a gloved hand, probe this next corner patty. Continue to probe the rest of the corner patties with this procedure. 69. 151. In this case, two of the readings were below 155 degrees and did not meet the food safety requirement of all four patties above 155 degrees so you'll need to increase the cooking time and repeat the check on another run of patties to determine that all of the internal temperatures meet both the safety and quality standards. Remember, if the patty does not meet food safety standards, the patties must be discarded. Wash and sanitize the UHC tray and sanitize the parameter probe. To adjust the grilling time, hold in the program button for approximately five seconds. When it displays this program area, press it again and it displays menu. Then, press the menu key until the display matches the product being cooked, 10 to 1 patties. Using the temperature button, scroll through the settings until you reach the time adjustment. Raise the time up one second. Then press the program key and the right arrow and you're back in the cook mode. To check the cook time adjustment you just did, cook another run of eight patties. The objective is to see if the temperatures satisfy both the food safety requirement and the quality requirement. Again, season each patty individually as soon as the clamshell opens. Immediately after removing all patties, take the center internal temperature of the four corner patties as before. 67. 75. All four temperatures are above the minimum 155 degrees standard, which meets the food safety requirement. And one patty was within the quality zone, from 155 to 165 degrees. 
Note that even though the other three temperatures were higher than 165 degrees, this test run meets the quality standard because of the one that tested within the quality zone. It's normal to have temperature variations on the same run. Be sure to repeat these steps for each grill platen used for 10 to 1 production. In addition, be sure to record all final temperatures and cook times in the food safety daily checklist. Establishing daily cook times for 4 to 1 patties is done the same as with 10 to 1 patties. You cook a full run of 6 4 to 1 patties. The same person cooks the patties and takes the temperatures. You'll take one reading from each of the four corner patties, and you still use the same safety and quality standard to determine your cook time. Begin by sanitizing the pyrometer probe. When setting up a quarter grill, a trained and verified person will cook six patties. Season and remove the patties. For food safety, four to one patties can be pulled in two stacks of three patties or three stacks of two patties. Pick up the pyrometer and begin to probe the four corner patties. 166. 170. 182. 178. All four temperatures are above the minimum 155 degree standard for food safety, but they are also all above the quality range. This test run is unacceptable from a quality point of view. This product needs to be discarded. You'll need to adjust the grilling time down. As before, hold in the program button for approximately five seconds. When it displays this program area, press it again and it displays menu. Then. Press the menu key until the display matches the product being cooked, 4 to 1 patties. Using the temperature button, scroll through the settings until you reach the time adjustment. Lower the time by one second. Then press the program key and the right arrow, and you're back in the cook mode. You'll need to repeat this check of the 4 to 1 patties using another 6 patties, the same as the first run. 170. When food safety and food quality standards have been met and the grill time has been set, record the temperatures and the cook time in your food safety daily checklist. No further validation is required. Repeat these tests until all sections of the grill have been checked. If one platen of the grill will be used to cook two types of beef patties during the day, make sure to do a complete check on both types of patties. Note that the checklist has a space to indicate which grill platen you are checking. It's important to have an accurate history of each platen, so make sure all managers know how they are numbered. Let's review these important points about checking the temperatures of beef products. Remember, when taking temperatures, each patty is probed once in the center. It is critical for beef quality that patties be seasoned and removed as quickly as possible after the platen begins to rise and within the maximum removal times, 22 seconds for full runs of 10 to 1 patties and 15 seconds for full runs of 4 to 1 patties. For all full run validations, 10 to 1 and 4 to 1s, it's critical that the temperature be measured immediately after all patties are removed from the grill because the patties begin to cool as soon as they're pulled. To meet the food safety standard, all internal temperatures must be at or above 155 degrees after cooking. In addition, at least one of the four internal temperatures you measure must meet the quality standard of an internal temperature of between 155 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Puddling juices should not be used as signs of proper cooking. To ensure correct temperatures, make sure the temperature on the pyrometer has stabilized a few seconds before recording a temperature. Never cook more than a full run. One additional reminder, starting cook time guidelines are just that, guidelines. Don't think of them as set cook times. Actual cook times are to be reconfirmed and potentially reset frequently. Next, we need to take the temperatures of the raw chicken products we cook in the restaurant, Chicken McNuggets, Premium Chicken, McChicken, Chicken Selects, and Spicy Chicken. 
First, sanitize the pyrometer probe, then check to make sure the oil level in the vat is at the appropriate level. Cook a full run of the product you are checking. Once the product is done, immediately take a temperature reading from four random pieces in the thickest portion. Record the temperatures on the checklist. If any temperature reading is below the minimum, move that portion off to the corner of the tray and let it sit for one additional minute. Then take another temperature reading in the same part of the portion, the thickest part. If the new reading is above 165 degrees, record this temperature on the checklist. In addition, using a universal spatula, cut this portion in half through the thickest part and examine the interior. It should appear fully cooked with no visible raw or undercooked areas. If the new readings are still below the minimum or the portion appears undercooked, dispose of all the portions from the run. Clean and sanitize the tray and the universal spatula, and sanitize the pyrometer probe. Check all areas in the troubleshooting guide and take corrective action. Undercooked products can never be served. After correcting any problems, cook another full run of product and repeat the test. Document the corrective actions taken. For grilled chicken, cook a full run, as determined by your restaurant, of premium grilled chicken. After the cooking cycle ends, remove all patties to the UHC tray. Immediately probe in the thickest portions. All internal temperatures for chicken products must be at or above 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Record all temperatures on the food safety daily checklist. Again, the person completing the regular menu section of the checklist should sign it. We've just completed all the information on one food safety daily checklist. Remember, completion of the checklist is a manager's responsibility. You must sign the checklist at the top after validating that all the items on the checklist have been completed. The manager completing each section should sign off on it too. If you have any questions, you can always call your regional food safety coordinator or your quality assurance manager. You can see how critical it is to our success that all these procedures be followed. Completing the food safety daily checklist is one of the ways that McDonald's will always be America's favorite place and way to eat.